Good morning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start. My name is Ann Tollefson, and I have the great pleasure of working with StarTalk as both a project director and a site team leader. And as a site team leader, I have visited many extraordinary programs around the country, and uh, Arizona State University is one of those programs. It has been a great pleasure working with them. And I don't want to take any credit for this. I'm just the coach on the side. But um, when we were asked to suggest programs that we thought uh, would be beneficial for this conference, I suggested ASU for a couple of reasons. First of all, they are a program that really looks at the proficiency of their students closely. They test them on the first day, and then they put them into proficiency groups. They have the same theme, but they differentiate very, very well. I think you will see when you look at their materials how well they engage the students. Uh, you don't see any students sitting around. You have a wide variety of activities, so their lesson planning is really, really strong. And I thought that you would all benefit from sharing from them. Um, also, don't worry about taking a lot of notes. This PowerPoint will be posted. It has sample lessons and sample materials, so you'll want to get those. But you don't have to worry about writing it all down, okay? So with that, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the project director, Xiao Zhang, and she's responsible for this wonderful crew of people at ASU who produce these fantastic lessons. Thank you very much, Anne. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. And we just experienced a little bit, oh my gosh, stress here, and hope everything will go smoothly after this. So briefly today, I'm going to talk about, uh, at the very beginning, it's a program overview. I'm going to very briefly go over this, and then I'm going to show you a little bit of sample work. And after that, we're going to go to lesson planning. And the focus of today's lesson, uh, focus of today's talk will be on um, analyzing two uh, sample uh, lesson plans. And a brief overview of our program this is a 15-day residential program. And we have 31 students this year. And we divide students into three classes. Before our program started, we did a placement test for our students. And even on the first day of the class, we also did another formal placement test. And even after the first day, you know how it goes. And it's still not very well, so we had to reassign students a little bit. And every group, we have three classes, and the proficiency level in every group is, is quite mixed, no matter what we do. So um, our daily schedule is we have in the morning about three hours of uh, language instruction in the afternoon. Uh, there isn't one hour of language instruction, but it's mostly reviewing what we have done in the morning. And then uh, we have about two hours of working as a group or working as individuals on their projects and assignments. Or sometimes, occasionally, we also have uh, culture activities. In the evening, we have um, private uh, tutoring sessions. And this goes on about two hours, but it's not you know, one person two hours. Uh, the whole session goes on two hours. And our program uh, curriculum this year is uh, our program theme is must-go cities in China. For those people who know uh, China, you will know that these are the four cities. Do you know what these four cities are? Beijing, Beijing and Shanghai, Shanghai Xi'an, Xi and Chengdu. Beijing. Yes. And this is also our, oh, I cannot show you. It's our logo for our uh, t-shirt, too. And so must-go uh, four cities, we provide four cities to the students. And then we have about eight uh, daily life-related topics in this program, and then our targeted proficiency is uh, for level one, a novice mid and novice high, and then intermediate mid. And we adopt a performance-based uh, assessment model. So we have a lot of tasks for students to do. And uh, one of them is um, final group project, which I'm going to show you. Very quickly, hope everything goes nice. So this is a project that, uh, this is a group project. We have these three levels from different uh, proficiency levels, and each group is usually composed of three or four uh, team members coming from different levels. And then they're supposed to um, promote uh, their program, uh, their city to the audience, and they're going to present it in the final uh, closing ceremony. And this is the, you know, the PPT they did for Xi'an, for uh, uh, Xi'an, this is the city that they're promoting. And 
they're going to promote it in several um, topics here. So the very first one is geography. This is a teamwork. And uh, students from the highest level will mentor those from the lowest level. So that's how you know, we get to this final product. This is geography and then transportation. And then the restaurant. You can see some of the slides have a little bit more um, complicated grammar. And some of the slides are a little bit easier. So because they, they come from different levels. And this is the weather. And then, you know, this is the last slide. At the closing ceremony, they're supposed to read, not read, recite them. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty challenging for the first year students when they have to perform it in front of so many people there. So this is a group project, and they did that um, at, the end of the pro at the end of the program. There is another one, which is about Chengdu. So uh, this team is composed of four people, sometimes three people. It depends on you know, uh, the number of students there. So this is also the geography of Chengdu. And the reason why we have English there, I used to have a different you know, student work, but there's no English. This one has English. The reason we have English is they're going to present it in front of the audience, so the audience knows what they're talking about. And so this is the cuisine, <laughs> weather. And some of them did a fantastic job, and I could not um, put everything together. So in addition to this, <clears throat> in addition to the group project, every student also did, also did a final, okay. Every student also had a poster <coughs> project by themselves. So this is, by indi this is individually. And this is done by our first year student. And he has absolutely no background from, you know, in Chinese at all. Our first uh, level one student is also mixed. It uh, ranges from students who have absolutely no background to students who have a little bit background. So this is the one who has absolutely no background. And then we have, you know, students so, the, oh, okay, I just want to tell you a little bit. This one says, I want to go to Beijing. So he is advertising Beijing to the audience. And this one is advertising Chengdu, also from these different aspects, but they do it individually. And then we put the poster on the you know, closing ceremony day. Everybody, uh, including the parents, can see that. And this is the third year students. So the third, um, Third year students is, all, is also mixed in class and it ranges from students who, have, uh, who are from intermediate mid or intermediate low to intermediate high. Because there are a few, there are a couple of heritage speakers who are pretty good. So basically I want to see how do, okay, so how do we bring our students to where we are, uh, where they are, and we do follow the principles of lesson planning, backward lesson planning, and also the principles endorsed by Startup. Uh, central and also uh, the TEL project, the planning uh, framework. So, and everybody knows that all these principles have been translated into these three stages when we plan when we plan the, uh, the lessons. These three uh, template, uh, this template we use for our lesson planning stage one, stage two, okay, and then the materials. So we know that stage one. What will students know? Be what will students know and be able to do with what we, you know, with what we know by the end of the lesson? This is the goal, right? But when we set the goals, what do you know? There are a few things that we need to consider here. You have to consider, you know, how does it align to our curriculum goal, uh, proficiency goal, and then how what students have learned uh, previously. What is their prior linguistic knowledge, including what they have learned just, you know, last <coughs> lesson? So basically, you have to set the context for this. And then their current linguistic ability, what is the really, you know, what is the level right now? And whether the students are interested in the things that you're doing in class, and then whether your goal set, whether the goals that you have set is, you know, are um, realistic or not. So we do have to consider those things. And for stage two is you set, you know, how are you going to evaluate the students? 
So there are different types of evaluation, and this is a just for one lesson. So we have this you know, formal versus informal, or formal and informal assessment. And then it also includes in-class and outside of classroom uh, assessment. And with this, in class, how do we provide feedback? Do we do it direct uh, corrections, or do we do it in, 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 indirectly? So there are different ways of giving feedback. So these are the things we need to consider when we write down uh, the lesson plan. And then the third stage is also a very important, is the very important stage is what, you know, what are the instructional activities that you use. And here I listed a few things. One is, you know, we do need to balance the input and output with activities. How much input, how many input activities we need to use and how many output activities we need to use. We do need to balance this. And then whether your activities have covered these three modes of communication or not. So that's very important. And whether you, as the instructor, did you, whether you recycle the knowledge, previous knowledge or not. Recycle your, the linguistic and also content knowledge. So that's very important too. And how about the student engagement? Do you, are your activities going to engage all of your students? So that is another thing. And whether you have a variety of activities or not, that's another thing too. And finally, the activities that you uh, plan should be level and age appropriate. So these are the few things for the third stage. And then the <coughs> other one about third stage is what specifically, you know, what specific activities are you going to include in your lesson plans? And we also follow the, you know, uh, the template, some of them. And the very first one is the opening activities. And then there was the input and then output activities and then the closing activities. So for our opening writ, Activities, we use, it's a warm up activity, and mostly it's, we use that time to review what I have learned previously. And then the input activities, right? It's how you teach the new uh, materials to our students. Uh, we try to do, uh, we try to teach <coughs> this in 100% you know, in Chinese in the target language. So you use pictures and you use stories, and then you, at the same time, you also check for the comprehension too. And output activities, when you plan the output activities, you do need to give very clear instructions. And you do need to give modeling, especially for level one students. Otherwise, they, they get confused. So modeling is very important. And the activities should be fun and practical, practical, and life relate, you know, relate to their life. So finally, there is the closing activities. How do we do the closing? We review, and then we give assignments. So basically, these are the activities we you know, we have for our lesson plans. Now let me go to our sample lesson plans. And this sample lesson plans, the background for this, this is day six. We have 15 days of instructions and day six. And day six, this is the background for um, our <coughs> students, level one students. So today I'm just going to talk about these two levels. Um, go, I'm going to show you these two levels and level one and level two. So. I don't know whether you can tell which one is the teacher here. <laughs> okay, so there is a teacher here. This is the teacher. She is uh, our graduate student who have been teaching with me as a TA for quite some time. And she, this, is this, this is her second time uh, teaching at Star Talk. And level two, level two uh, is Grace. Grace is our uh, curriculum, especially for Confucius Institute, so she has been uh, helping, um, she has been designing the curriculum for Confucius Institute for quite some time. So every level we have, you know, different level, different students, and it's a mixed background. And we're trying to, you know, for novice, uh, for this level one, our target proficiency is trying to is targeting proficient uh, novice mid. And then for the level two novice high, or some people can get to, you know, intermediate low because of their, you know, starting background. And the theme, so we have actually two days uh, on this unit. Uh, it's food and culture. And the, uh, the day, the lesson plan I'm going to show you is actually focusing on food and restaurant. So a little bit, you know, the focus is different. The first one is uh, focusing on introducing the food. So these are the, you know, special, uh, the special dishes, specialty dishes in each city. So, oh no, I cannot 
show them. Um, so this is the day six lesson plan. And I'm going to show you the lesson plan as well for this, uh, for this level one, as well as some specific instructions in her class. So as we uh, know that in order, the first stage of lesson plan is to set the goals. And the set, your goals should be related to, should be aligned to your proficiency level. I don't know whether you can read it or not. I apologize. Yeah, for we this. don't have access to the PowerPoint. Yeah, it is pretty, uh, the, you know, it's pretty small, but this is the best I can do. So, but you can, I want you to uh, draw your attention to the one is for the proficiency goals for this level is familiar words and phrases or memorized phrases and words, right, on very, very familiar topics. So this is the proficiency goal. And so uh, stage one, we identify the goal for this lesson. This is the day six lesson and what they will be able, what students will be able to do. Actually, the lesson plan which I received, you know, we received is for uh, the whole day. So it's three hours. But for today's, uh, for today's uh, talk, I, break, I broke them up just for about 90 minutes. So because in the morning we have, you know, three hours. And this one is for only 90 minutes. <coughs> and so the, uh, here is the, Students were able to do ask and respond questions on the food or drink, one would like to order, and then place a simple order for herself and for the friend, too. So there are two things. Now, in order to do this, they have to know, you know, common uh, Western and Chinese food items. They also have to know words like restaurant or menu or to order things. These three vocabularies, the key ones. And then they have to say, you know, uh, expert, uh, they have to say, I would like to order something, something. And what would you like to order? And I would like to order something. So this is um, the goal that we set for this lesson. And for the stage two is how we're going to evaluate this. What are the evidence? So for this one is they're going to be informally uh, assessed through uh, classroom uh, activities. And then outside of class, students will be formally assessed through, they'll have a can-do statement sheet, and then the journal writing, and then the voice recording. I'm gonna show you that. Hope I have time to show you that. Sh yeah, Sean, you should just tell them a little bit about that. that okay. Too, just so they get a sense of what that is. Yeah, <coughs> so uh, for this one is, basically uh, we use, a, we use uh, a website called KitBlog. I don't know how many of you know that. Okay, Kit Blog is very, very good. We, um, if you use it by yourself, I'm going to show you and hope I have time for that. So if you have, um, if you have only one teacher and no matter how many students you have, it's free. But we, we are using it for several teachers, so we pay only $5 for one month. Only $5 for one month. So it's pretty affordable for a program, you know, for summer program. And so let's go to her um, stage three, the in planning for instruction, opening activities. So for this one, the objective is to review what has been covered in previous lesson. And this is, these are the things that have been covered, name of the featured cuisine in the four cities and their flavor, and giving simple comment on the food. So these are the things that have been learned previously. And then how, it, how are we going to review them so the very first one is we're going to ask them to match the picture with the name. So the name is written in characters, so they have to know the characters too. Our uh, level one students is, you know, we have, I think our target is about 60 characters for the whole program uh, for the students who have absolutely no background in Chinese characters. So it, it, is, uh, it is pretty challenging. For our first year students, they do have the choice. They can do pinyin, you know the alphabets, they can also write characters. So whichever they feel more comfortable in. There are students who really love to write characters. And number two, you know the instructor will ask questions and then check for their understanding, basically. And they will ask their, she will try to ask them, you know, what is the name of the dish? So they have to talk about it and how, what is their flavor? And whether the food is delicious, how how So delicious or not. And this goes to the first stage. 
after, and then the second stage is the input activities. So input activities, this is the level one students, we do use a tremendous amount of pictures to teach the new vocabulary and new structures. And the instructors use pictures and authentic materials to show you know, what is the menu, what is the restaurant, and what do we mean by, you know, DN means order. So how do you get the meaning across to the students? Which is not really easy. If you, you know, teach only in the target language, it's not really that easy. And so uh, this is one a specific example in uh, PowerPoint. So this is the Shengzi vocabulary. And the teacher will say, shi cai dan, cai dan. And students have to listen to it. We do have, you know, uh, we do have, we do start to use characters on the first day. Because I think that it's important that students were exposed to the characters uh, on the very first day. And then uh, we have this pinyin coming out. Because students are learning pinyin, the spelling, the pronunciation. At the same time, they're learning the content here. So we're teaching them pinyin, and then at the same time, they're also learning new uh, content. So this is the Cai Dan, and we use you know, American Cai Dan here. And then how do we know that they, they really know it's a Cai Dan? So there is the menu, and we have you know, different pictures. And of course, apparently, this is not a Cai Dan, and this is not a Cai Dan. <coughs> so teacher will check whether they understand this or not, whether they understand the meaning of Cai Dan or not. And just a Cai Dan Ma is this menu. So she will point to here, is she will point to you know, that picture, is that a, a menu, is this a menu? But of course, the, you know, if we know that they have understood, they say no. And then is this a menu? Yes, sure. So this is how you check for understanding. And at the same time, we also brought in, you know, um, American dish you know, menu, and also the Chinese dish menu. So, they will have a little bit of idea if they go to Chinese restaurant, which you know looks a little bit different. So the just Chinese Cai Dan, Chinese dish menu, and just Cai Cai Dan. So she's also incorporating pre prior uh, linguistic knowledge into this, and also introduce a little bit of culture here. And then you know for after the output, so that's only just one small example there. Uh, and they are going. She's going to check. You know informally check whether the students have understood the whole thing or not. So, and the students were working groups and listen to the audio clip and then they're going to uh, point to that so that we know they understand. Let me see. So this is the instruction that we wrote for the students. Listen to the, you know, three short. Because, you know, this is the level one students. We have to give them very clear instructions, and the instructions is done in English. Uh, we put it online there. And so these are the, uh, some, you know, exercises that they're doing in class. Uh, the informal assessment, just, oh, let me see. So basically, you know, this one says, I am Mulan, I'm Chinese, so I like, um, I like Doujiang, and I don't like Ke Le, or something like that. And then, so the students are going to match the picture with what they have listened. And then we go to the output activities. So students are going to be given this uh, visual image of the dish. And then the students were also, it's a group work, and they're, go they're going to work in a group of three. They're going to first identify the dish and then practice asking and responding to the questions that, you know, on the food one would like to order. And so at, this, at the same time, instructors will have one student from each group point to the menu. And the menu is written, you know, she created the menu herself, is written in pin and characters. So that we're also checking, you know, the inter interpretive mode too. And so here, is this is what we do. So we do have, this is a very important thing, is every time uh, for our novice level, they do need to have some kind of model there. And in our first, we, in every class we have a TA. 
So not only we show the model uh, up on the slides, we also, uh, we also have this teacher and the TA interact with each other and show the students how are we going to do this exercise. So, now what would like to order? I would like to order something. This is the key structure for this one. And then the step two is you want to report what your, uh, your member, uh, team member wants to order here. And the other one uh, output activity is the three-step interview. This actually can get it from the model uh, lesson plans from the Star Talk. So um, this one, it depends on, uh, it, it's divided into three stages. So there is the step one, one A interview B, B interview C, uh, and then the reverse order. And then they're going to report back. So not only that you ask the students to do the group activities, you also need to hold them accountable to see you know, what they have really done there. And then the teacher will show, you know, these are the steps, these are the models for step one, how you, you may follow these models. And she's also modeling with the TA too. And for step three, it's also the same thing. And then as a closing uh, activity, they're going to use the exit sheet, uh, sheet and then, you know, uh, ask uh, to try to find out whether the students have indeed understood what has been taught today or not and then they were giving the assignment. So this is something which I was talking about. Uh, we, our students have a travel planner. So there is a travel planner and it's almost like a book. We created the travel planner and students have to write it. So actually we have about this, you know, the same activities, but we're trying to address different modes of communication and also different type of skills. For that one, they have to use hand to write it. And they also post a blog on the kid blog. In that way, they type it or they're going to upload a video or audio or pictures on the kid blog, onto the kid blog. So the same things, but you are trying to uh, uh, testing them in different modes. And then they complete a photo story using uh, Shadow Poppy. This is something that we use this, we implement this time. And uh, the materials is like that. So this is the whole lesson plan for our um, for our uh, novice uh, one uh, teacher. And at the end of the lesson, uh, this is the can-do statement that every day we have students do it uh, with, their, with their resident advisors and TAs. So this is mostly done in the evening. And we have a stamp. If you get one stamp or two stamps or, you know, or three stamps, we want to sh see whether they have indeed got what have, you know, what have been taught in the daytime. Now, um, um, do you have any questions relating to this first um, level one? No? Sean, I would just interject as an as observer when you're watching this. You watch one student, which I like to do when I'm watching. That student is constantly engaged, either listening or speaking or reading, and then they spend the evenings uploading and uh, doing, they upload visuals, mm -hmm. they upload audios. So every, every student is doing something all the time, all the time. And when you look at their classrooms, and that's why it's really valuable to get some of these lesson plans, you don't see a teacher-dominated classroom at all. And you see kids changing activities every 10, even yeah. five minutes, yeah. they're just constantly moving. Uh, they're exhausted, I've interviewed the students, but they learn a lot. Uh -huh. Yes, so um, for our level two, and level two, I just want to uh, uh, remind you, this is a mixed level of students. We have 12 students. This is the biggest uh, number of students. I think this is the biggest, 12 students. And for this one, uh, the proficiency level moves up a little bit. And uh, the target proficiency is novice mm, high. So this level, uh, we involve sentences, simple sentences or sometimes there is a strength of simple sentences, but at the same time, there are also, um, uh, the topics are also extremely familiar to the students. And um, for this lesson for the teacher, you know, our, uh, we have uh, every, every class share the same uh, topic and also the same task. So, but the differ in terms of linguistic requirement. So we require them writing, you know, differently. 
uh, in terms of the, you know, we have to uh, mm, pay attention to the linguistic levels. So for the level one, it would be very simple. Level two will be a little bit more, and level three will be a little bit more. So for this one is asking, give comments on different dishes. You see this one is asking and then describe a problem at the restaurant. This is not just simply ordering the dish. So for the level one, you are ordering the dish, which is the most basic one. For this, they are describing a problem in the restaurant. And then they also need to negotiate to solve the problem <coughs> at the restaurant. And finally, they are asking and answer the price after the problem is solved. So this is something that for segment year, you can see that it's moving up. The level is moving up now. So they have to know these vocabularies and the structures. And how did the teacher go about this one then? And okay, for the second stage is the same thing. And let's go to the third stage. And how do they plan their instruction? So the, the very first stage is also the opening stage, which is also review what they have learned previously. And these are the things that they have learned, how to express hunger using courtesy language in the restaurant, and how to order drink with requirement, and how to order dish with requirement. So the teacher at the same time will always check comprehension. And she used two games. This is what uh, Grace really loved to use. I don't know whether you have heard about speed dating. Yeah. It's very interesting. And also the other thing she does is, you know, that she uses the online grouping tools, which is very, very nice too. And so they're using this group dating uh, activity uh, game, and then they also use a role play game to review what they have learned previously. So you can see the difference between this level and the other level. And then uh, for the um, input stage, also use print of pictures and authentic materials. And students work in pairs, same thing, ask and give comments on the flavor of different dishes. So how do you like the food? How do you like the flavor? I think the dish is very good and it's So it smells good. And then they also use she also uses a fear factor game to describe what the ingredient included is. I remember, were you there and the she has this vinegar and then, you know, spices. So students are not going to they, they, uh, they cover their eyes and then they're going to just taste it and see, okay, what is this? So they have to identify that. And then they're going to describe the flavor. So for example, if it's uh, tian tian de, you know, tian tian de, um, or suan suan de, a little bit sour, you know, so they have to describe that too. But I think, you know, it's, it, it tastes very good. And then they have to use a different structure. It's, Shi or something. Tastes really good. So, and then the other one, and then we go to the other stage, uh, the other activity. The instructor will use a story in the target language. So, she uses a story based way to teach uh, the new materials. So, this story tells, you know, uh, what problem happened in the restaurant, and then how you're going to negotiate the problem, and then how do you ask for a discount because of that problem. So these are the things that's included in the story. So I don't, okay. So the story says, I, oh, I, oh, I do not feel comfortable, and uh, are you allergic? <laughs> and then I have, you know, allergy medicine. And then uh, the person, would, uh, st speaker, a student would say, waiter or waitress, is it, do you have uh, peanuts in your dish? <laughs> and I am, you know, allergic to peanuts. And then the uh, waiter would say, sorry, yes, there is, you know, there are peanuts in the dishes, uh, we can give you a discount, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so this is the story that, you know, <laughs> yes. And then the students will learn what do, uh, the discount, how much. So they have to learn this da ji zhe. So how much, you know, da zhe is give discount, is how much, you know, how many discounts are you going to give? And then there's our give, give, or going to give you some discount, and then they negotiate to see, you know, can we negotiate a little bit lower uh, the price? So finally, they're going to pay for the price. So basically, that's it. And then in order to check, so this is this is the new materials, and then to check with the students understood the story, the very stage, the very first stage is they need to match the 
image is the picture of the story. So this is the first stage. But of course, you know that at the very first time, students make a lot of mistakes because they don't, you know, there are so many new things there that they don't really, under, they did not really understand. So the teacher will do a scaffolding to explaining the details of the story. In this way, she's going to explain what do we mean by da zhe, you know. I had a question regarding to, during your planning time, mm -hmm. uh, I can see all the input and output mm -hmm. connecting. Mm -hmm. But when you pair the students up or when they do their own exercise practice, how did you expect and also uh, regulate if they own speaking English to each other? And when they have a question to ask you, they don't have the coefficiency speaking in Chinese, and how do you manage in those area? We, we, uh, this, is a re this is a really difficult thing. So we right. start this at the very, on the very, very first day. We have no, uh, we have a pledge basically. Speak Chinese only, even for the very first level. So we teach them very basic classroom uh, expressions on the very, very first day. And the, student, and the teachers also adding new uh, commonly used classroom expressions every day so I'm that they try to do that. I mean, not ask the question in the right time, but if you had a couple of recommendations, how you handle those situations, if you have time at the end, okay. maybe you can show us what is the strategy. Because uh -huh. like, <coughs> if I am even intermediate, I may spend 10 minutes to ask simple question, what is this paper cup call? But, but I may try to steal a couple words. So how do you facilitate in, you know, I would like to more practical, I like all this program input and planning. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes the challenge is when you're actually in the program, how to handle those uh, differentiations. Yeah, we so can talk you. about it after class, because I am trying to, you know. We have five minutes? Ten minutes. Okay. Ten minutes. Okay. So after that, uh, the, teaching, uh, the teaching new materials, and the next one is, you know, students will create their own story. She did the exact scaffolding, and then the next one, students are going to create <coughs> their own story, of course, based on what they have just learned, and also, uh, bring in the materials that they have learned previously too. So for this activity, they also need to use the knowledge that they have learned in the you know prior lessons. So this is the activity that they do, and then they prevent the story as a group, and the instructor will check uh, whether the other group understand what they're talking about, right? So they'll ask questions based on their the teacher will ask questions based on their stories to the other students. So in that in that way. You're always, you're constantly checking for understanding. And as a closing, you know, as a closing uh, activity, this is also the same. This is what they do. And then the students will finish the travel planner, and then they will post a blog, and then they will do the uh, can-do statement. So this is the can-do statement for that lesson. So this is the a uh, block for level for what level one student, and this is the day, and this one is uh, weather. I want to go down a little bit. So how can I specifically you show that? And if you can, maybe you cannot say for this day they have to use the shadow puppet, and then they upload that, what they have done that day to the blog. So there's no way I can. No. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I. So this one is the weather, uh, the the day for the weather. I want to show them the the food. That one. Oh. Yeah. Okay, still going on. So this is the weather for Chengdu, and this is for Phoenix, where we come from. And they're going to, and the teacher is usually going to give a, you know, model here how you're going to write the whole, you know, the whole paragraph because this is a level one. They always give a model. And students can just fill in with the phrases or sometimes just words there. So, um, yeah, go down to the food. Yes. So this is the day for the food uh, and culture. Can you go in? Can you go down a little bit more? And this one shows. So this is especially for Shanghai. Xiaolongbao. So this is the dish, specialty for Shanghai. 
and then we're going to say, okay, Shanghai. So this this city has Xiaolongbao, and then Xiaolongbao, this. And then Xiaolongbao, very good, very delicious. And also, sweet. Okay, let me go down a little bit. And then that one is for. Yeah. Okay, so this is the uh, hot and spicy food in Sichuan. Can we click a video here, audio? I don't know whether this is the right one or not. Yeah. So in a lot of times, they not only need to write the stuff or label the picture, they also need to uh, record uh, what they have learned too. So in order to uh, bring our students, to maximize students' learning, basically it is very important to plan, to carefully plan the lessons and to follow the principles uh, set forth by the Start Talk Central and then the TELL project. So this is one, you know, we have these nine uh, principles set forth by the um, TELL project. And I'm pretty sure that you know all of this. I'm not going to read them, read each one of them so that I can leave some time for questions. We have about seven minutes. Thank you. Any questions? I, this, thank you very much. It was a beautiful presentation. Um, when you're in the classroom, uh, you just want to know exactly what's happening in the classroom and what's happening behind the scenes. So I really hope that in the future uh, we could have, you know, online there are some uh, lessons recorded, you know, yeah, in the that's classroom. Every, every time in our site visitors suggest us, we should record our yeah. teachers' uh, Yeah, it would be lessons. great to see that. Yeah, we should do that next time. We'll try to do that next time. Yeah. yeah. Like how we do, we, you know, we did a lot of you know, professional training trainings beforehand, mm -hmm. especially for the new teachers. Mm -hmm. And for the new teacher, uh, we, re we work very closely with them, and then we work as a team. Mm -hmm. So even before the program start, I mean two or three months before the program started, we had meetings, we started to have meetings. And then we decide all of the uh, projects, what we're going to do, and even the detail, we go as detailed as you know, the language requirement for each level on a daily basis, we go mm -hmm. to that too. Mm -hmm. so, so the lessons are, 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 are created uh, not, be sorry, not, not, not before, but after, uh, but like every day, the new lessons created? Oh yeah, oh mm -hmm. yes, yes. But you know, for the main thing, for example, the, the theme and then the, re the projects, the assignments for every day, it's already, mm -hmm. it's already planned. From before. Yeah, before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, I've seen you have activity for the mm -hmm. language, like uh, pieces, like the uh -huh. beginning, you teach flavor, things yes, like yes. that. And I, I also see um, you plan the activity for the output, what mm -hmm. the student will be look like after mm -hmm. the, this, uh, this mm -hmm. all the learning, yes. and like they can solve problem in a mm -hmm. restaurant. Mm -hmm. But I want to, if I can see more, like how you from the pieces and students and build up to the, be able to have the, to deal with some issues in the restaurant, so I want to see more of that. Actually, for that for that one, actually, I was there when we were teaching for the this is the novel this is the novice mid intermediate low uh, class. You will be you will be amazed. But the thing is, uh, we really build up the scaffolding the whole thing, building the pieces. So this is uh, for that class uh, this lesson. It should be it's not uh, it's not about ninety minutes more than ninety minutes for the novice for the level two students. But for the level one, that is only a 90 minute class. And um, I think their strength is, I know what you're saying, is they start and you can, look, you can watch it in their classroom. It's very carefully scaffolded. And they really make yeah. adjustments every day. Um, and because if you think about it, they have at the end of the day, every student has a, a journal and every student has uploaded it to blog. So as instructors, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they work night and day. But they do know where the students are, and they very carefully <coughs> scaffold. But as I say, if you watch one student, it's really interesting to watch how that student is constantly engaged, writing, listening, 
speaking, working in a small group, working in a big group, working in a group of kids with the same proficiency level, and then working in a project with kids from different proficiency levels. So if I'm a beginner, the advanced student's helping me. So they really have paid special attention to the experience of every student in, in scaffold. I don't know yes, if I answered your question or not. It's very, very complex, very for sure. You have to build up the knowledge in order for them to be able to perform. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yes. Um, and the ability to make a sentence that express their right. own opinion. Yes, yes. And then they will be able to ask this the question, is, what do you like? What uh -huh. flavor do you like? Yes. Um, that kind of, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, the, fla the flavor thing actually is taught, is taught the day before already, and then they were going to commenting on, you know. So it's already, that part is already done. Basically for this part, for 90 minutes for this part is to solve, try to <coughs> solve a problem in the restaurant that I'm allergic to something. And then, you know, negotiate the price. Yeah, I don't think they can uh, share one day of plan. So yeah. we missed that before, how you build up uh -huh. day by day to the end that they have the, oh, all of a sudden, wonderful, they can do solve this problem. So we just this that. Because uh, this food then, unit, we have two days. Oh. So two days so. is almost like, you know, six hours. Six hours of language teaching, and then plus the afternoon. So it's not just a one day we can do that. It's two days. <laughs> and then we also have a very good support. You know, we have TAs, and we have resident <coughs> advisors helping in the classroom, and we have evening tutoring sessions too. So the students are working very hard. We, our teachers, are working extremely hard too. So they post the blog and the teacher are also going to you know, go there and look at each one of them and give comment. Only two days is a big accomplishment. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have, I think this is every time, yeah, we've already actually slowed down. This, we're, every time we're asked to cut down, cut down, cut down a little bit more. But the thing, my, because uh, I've been doing this for, I think this is my sixth, sixth year. That's going towards uh, seventh year and you know that Oh, yeah, it was the one, Jennifer was the one who, you know, the first site visitor to our program. So. And it was impressive the, then. All oh, yeah, the we have all of the site visitors here. Brilliantly <coughs> done, the interaction between the students. Uh, it was just like this back then as well. Is that the residential program? Pardon? Is that the residential It's a residential program. Mm -hmm. So that you have the evening tutoring. Yes. We have the evening tutoring. Sorry. It's very impressive to see the variety of word choices and uh -huh. instructors the students are learning and using. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering for the daily lessons and the weekly lessons, do you have a goal of how many key vocabularies you want to teach and you want a student yes. to learn? Yes, I think that, yes, that is very important. So for example, for that 90, min for that 90 minutes for the novice, for novice uh, low, the level, uh, level one students, I think we only have about zero, uh, new uh, roll and then dumplings, and then tanguan, tian, less than 10. And so you provide like the sentence frames, but it's not yes. required for them yeah. to like recognize and read and write. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah. Because the level one <laughs> students, it's hard. Some, you know, some of them start from scratch. The reason we want to put them on, uh, you know, pull them up a little bit more, because there are students who have a little bit of background. Yeah, so really, those students who have no background, if you push them really hard, they can get there. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. You mentioned that you did uh, testing before they got into placement yes. them in the level. So what did you use to test them prior to entering the program? And then on the first day, you tested them again. We had, uh, actually, during the application, when they're applying for the program, we have a student information sheet, which I used for my regular Chinese program at ASU. So these include the language background information. So we did, you know, uh, the, that's the first time we did the, uh, the placement. And then on the first day of the class, on the first of the class, we did a formal placement test, which includes all skills. So even if it's like that, after the first and second day, there are a few students, or a couple of students who still want to switch. Yeah, it is not, because I am actually responsible, responsible for placement for my regular program. <coughs> Is it we do a lot to get of access to those. Huh? Is it possible to get access to those two, um, as to, to those two leveling things that you used? 
Oh yeah, why, yes, you can just, you know, we can talk after. Okay. Send me the email. I will send you the email. Okay, great. students you said less than 10 is that is that your daily goal is that or is that an per hour or per lesson it really How it really you? varies it really varies depending on depending on the goal of that lesson and depending on the difficulty level of that <coughs> lesson too Indeed. I think for novice one we have you know a vocabulary is actually more than the characters they have to recognize because these are two different skills for characters for the whole program we require them to be able to know uh, about 60 characters. But for the vocabulary on a daily basis, I think it would be about 10. At that's least a, 10. That's a daily basis. 10 or, 10 or 20. If, if, if your students are actually absorbing all of these words, mm -hmm. do you think adding more will mess their comprehension level, or is it okay to add if they're actually absorbing it? I feel it's, it, it will be difficult. Because you know, these are the four skills, I mean the <coughs> three communication mode that we have to cover. They have to be able to use it to speak it and to present it and to be able to write it and to be able to recognize it. So I you know, I we carefully design, I think it should be enough. Yeah. Okay, thank you very thank much. You.